when we actually go out and measure the densities of asteroids, um, they could be made of rock. They, some asteroids can be made of ice, um, but some asteroids have densities that don't actually match exactly either of those. So what do you think if we found an asteroid with density 0.73 grams per centimeter cubed, what do you suppose its composition could be? All right, so if our asteroid has a density that's lower than rock, but also lower than ice, then that must mean that some of it must contain empty space, meaning that in, it has to have some sort of porous structure where there can be sort of pockets of empty space. Um, th these types of asteroids, instead of being a solid body, like we would think of you know, Ceres or Vesta, those planetesimals as being very solid. Instead, it's very porous and we call these rubble pile asteroids. So here's a couple of asteroid examples. Um, based on their density, which one of these do you think is more likely to be a rubble pile asteroid? Yeah, exactly. The lower density asteroid must contain more pockets of empty space than the, the more high density asteroid. So here, Matilda is our rubble pile asteroid. Ida has a, a density high enough to be made almost entirely of solid rock. Okay. So um, one thing that we might wanna know about asteroids, just like with any other object, is how old are they? So how do you suppose we are able to find the ages of asteroids? Yeah, so crater counting is how we figure out how old they are. Um, so that's correct. And, and number four is our answer here because these asteroids, Matilda, Gasper, and Ida, being 200 million years old, that's really young compared to the solar system's age of around four and a half billion years old. So that means that these asteroids must be some of those collision products. They must not be those primitive asteroid types. So they're not leftover planetesimals, they're chunks from a collision. All right, some asteroids though don't have craters on them. So for example, Itakawa is a rubble pile where there's a lot of weakly bound um, rocks and ice chunks. Um, Japan visited this with the Hayabusa probe and brought a sample back to Earth. And from that sample, we find that the dust on um, Itakawa is only 8 million years old. So this is a relatively recent object that has agglomerated from small bits of rock and ice in space. All right, um, I am going to skip to here. So um, there are some asteroids also that um, are small, but they don't come from collisions. So I mentioned Eros along with Vesta and Ceres as being a primitive asteroid. We can tell that it's rather large because it has craters, but they're partially filled in, suggesting that there has been some weathering over time on its surface um, from you know, very small collisions with other small particles, just like the moon experiences, those micrometeoroid impacts that soften up its craters. And it's actually more cratered than um, asteroid Ida. So that means that it's potentially as old as the solar system itself. All right, I wanna briefly mention the location of asteroids. Um, we've talked about this in the past, but they're primarily within an asteroid belt and they are organized in groups. So the groups that asteroids are located within are called asteroid families. Um, these groups have basically similar orbits. So they'll have a similar semi-major axis, which is distance from the sun, similar orbital eccentricity, and similar inclination, which is how tilted it is from the orbit of the planets. Where do you suppose these asteroid families came from? Yeah, so these asteroid families have a common origin. They came from the same collision. So they're collision products from the same parent body. And because of that, they share similar compositions. Um, so when we look at asteroid families, we can actually, we can make graphs of them basically. Don't worry about this graph in particular. Um, it's the inclination versus the orbital distance. 
But what you can find is if you just consider orbital distance, there are these groups of asteroids that are what we consider in the same family. So these all have different names and um, different familiar asteroids are labeled within this. Anyway, it helps us understand, you know, the asteroids in a single asteroid family came from a single collision. And so we can sort of piece back backwards from the asteroid family to the collisions and when those collisions must have happened based on the ages of the asteroids in the families. So I think this is pretty cool. It's like reverse engineering the history of the solar system based on looking at the asteroid families. All right, so here is the asteroid belt, its location in our solar system between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. And most of the asteroids are in this main asteroid belt that is shaded white here in this image. Um, but some of them are elsewhere, so I'll talk about those in just a second. Within the main asteroid belt, if we look at the um, semi-major axes of the orbits of those asteroids and then count up how many are in each orbital distance, then we find that there are some gaps um, where there are no asteroids at specific orbital distances. Those are called the Kirkwood gaps and they are created by orbital resonances with Jupiter. And so basically the same thing that clears out gaps in the rings of Saturn also clears out gaps in the asteroid belt, except for instead of orbital resonance with the moon in the case of Saturn's rings, it's orbital resonance with Jupiter in the case of the asteroid belt that results in these gaps. Jupiter itself also is a place where asteroids have gathered. So there are two groups of asteroids. One is called the Trojans, one is called the Greeks. And both of these um, orbit in the same um, location as Jupiter, like the same orbital distance ahead of it and behind it in its orbit. So as Jupiter orbits around the sun, those Trojan and Greek camp asteroids just follow it around. And so this is a, a fairly special gravitational effect. They have the same, share the same orbit as Jupiter. And these two special locations that can follow Jupiter in its orbit are called Lagrange points. Essentially what happens is that those objects in a Lagrange point always stay at the same place relative to the orbiting body. 